Thank you for uh, joining us in this uh, last session, for not uh, walking away. Um, I'm presenting work together with my colleague uh, Joris van Zundert and a number of other colleagues who uh, are not here at the moment. And I'm going to talk about putting to test the effective aesthetic potential. And the effective aesthetic potential is a um, sort of a valence uh, targeted at literary text devised by um, Arthur Jacobs. Um, and we've been applying that in our uh, uh, project. Um, and we have some findings about this. So what am I going to do? Um, first of all, talk a little bit about the project. Um, talk about why we want to use um, emotion when looking at literary text. Um, talking about how Arthur Jacobs defined this concept and um, um, what he has done with it. Then explain how we have interpreted it and are handling it. And then uh, look a bit at the future of what we might do. So, first of all, the Impact in Fiction project. Um, it's a project where we have um, about half a million downloaded book reviews. We have, in an agreement with the Dutch publishers, access to about uh, 20,000 uh, Dutch novels. Um, and uh, we have information about the reviewers uh, who have written the reviews. And that those are three um, collections of data that we think uh, should help us in explaining uh, why um, uh, a certain book uh, of a certain genre has a certain effect on uh, a certain type of reader. Um, for the reviews, we have um, the reading impact model. And in the reading impact model, we look at the narrative and stylistic expressions that are used in the review in order, and the emotional expressions that are used in the review reviews in order to get an idea of at what dimensions um, of response uh, uh, a reviewer is writing about. Um, we have some annotations about the reviews. We have some review metadata. For the reviewers, we have um, some metadata, mostly the type of books that they prefer and the amount of books that they read, or at least that they write about. And for the books, we have the full texts. And uh, well, on full text, you can define lots of low level measures, for instance, word counts or frequencies, et, et cetera. But what we would like to do is also to get at some higher level features that are actually interesting from the perspective of, um, uh, of reading. And then we have some book metadata like genre, et cetera. Um, one of the things that, of course, we have to look at is uh, emotion. Uh, Books um, speak to people, to speak to readers emotionally, and it's also the emotions in books that are um, uh, uh, important to the readers. And as you may know, um, there are several ways of looking at emotion. Um, uh, there are discrete emotion models, where you have anger and disgust and joy, which are considered as separate um, things. But you also have dimensional emotion models, where those different uh, emotions are placed in a three-dimensional space valence, arousal, and dominance. And especially valence is a concept that's often used in the study of, uh, of all sorts of texts. Valence, that's the positive or negative, the evaluative uh, aspect uh, of the emotion. And there are lexicons available for valence. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, lexicons created by asking people uh, what sort of feeling do you associate with a certain word. Um, of course, a question is to what extent that concept is actually suitable for uh, narrative. Um, narrative has some special characters which make it different from, let's say, uh, uh, product reviews or other texts. And um, the effective aesthetic potential could be um, a concept which is suitable, especially, uh, especially for, the, uh, for, the, for the literary domain. So what did Arthur Jacobs do? Um, um, the concept was introduced in an article from 2017 quantifying the beauty of words, uh, in which Jacobs tried to predict the beauty of 130 German words. Um, they're represented here in English. The, uh, the ones are the beautiful words, and the zeros are the um, ugly words. Um, it's presented as the beauty of words, but I think there's a very clear aspect also of the meaning of the words. So for instance, um, hopelessness and insignificance um, uh, it may not be so much about the beauty of the word as a sound, but also clearly the, the meaning of this is involved. 
And he uses a number of different um, input fields in order to try to explain this uh, beauty. Uh, number of syllables, sonority sound, so that's mostly about the sound, word length, the surprise value, a number of other uh, values that are difficult here, or be difficult here to explain, but also this uh, aesthetic potential. And um, uh, the uh, aesthetic potential, um, which is later renamed to the effective aesthetic potential, um, is really um, the similarity to a number of positive keywords and then subtracted the similarity to a number of negative keywords and the similarity is based on German net, which is a sort of word net for, for German. Um, then the um, prediction uses a decision tree procedure and the aesthetic potential actually turns out to be an important predictor. Um, a number of the keywords, which, um, or the seed words, which um, Jacobs uses. I think what you recognize, uh, the positive keywords, for instance, are um, many words that might also occur in a regular valence-associated uh, um, uh, definition, like um, uh, uh, all the positive terms that occur, like uh, delight, and, and joy and pleasure, they're cle clearly valence related, but there are also some terms that are related more to art, uh, music and art uh, figure. When you look at the negative words, again, there are some that are clearly valence related, but also some things that are more, um, well, things that we probably dislike, such as disease. Um, there's also unculture. Um, uh, so the idea is that positive and negative also uh, is associated with culture and without culture. Um, about the choice of these words, um, Jacobs writes in his uh, appendix, it was challenging to find a novel set of labels which would optimize the task at hand. Um, after extensive pilot studies, I came up with a tentative novel list of, novel list of 62 positive and 62 negative words for computing the uh, aesthetic potential for each target word. So um, Jacobs does pre uh, present this in 2017 as a somewhat tentative approach. Um, I don't think that since then um, the list have become, has become less tentative, except that it's now being used in more contexts. Um, the uh, next publication uh, about this was uh, Jacobs and Kinder 2020. Um, before that, in 2019, Jacobs introduced what he called the Senti Art approach, and the idea of the Senti Art approach is really to um, use word embeddings, so um, um, uh, vector spaces where each word is associated with a vector in so, let's say, a 300-dimensional space, and which is supposed to represent um, uh, um, uh, the differences of meaning between different words, and um, uh, on the other hand, a number of seed words in order to compute certain uh, emotion concepts within text. Um, what we see here um, as, an, as, a, as a simple example, this is not related to the um, uh, aesthetic potential as yet, but you see here in a word embedding space a number of very different words like uh, woman and man, house, cat and dog. The cat and dog, for instance, are um, in the um, bottom right, and you see the related concepts are close, but the um, uh, clearly distinct concepts are also further away in the um, uh, 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 embedding. So the, the embedding indeed does show something of uh, semantic relations. You also see here on the right uh, the negative emotions, and you see the negative emotions are um, much more clearly um, mixed uh, and, and not so not so easy to uh, take apart as these other concepts which you saw on the left. Um, Jacobs in this uh, 22 article computes the um, effective aesthetic potential for um, whole word embeddings at the same time and uh, he uses this to uh, predict uh, a number of words which have been um, annotated by humans as having a certain valence. And you see here the um, results of um, the, um, the valence concepts, which he uh, computes within this uh, uh, word embedding. And uh, it predicts um, the uh, human 
uh, assigned valences to some extent, you see that actually the effective aesthetic potential on the right uh, does the prediction much better. Um, so there's clearly a relation between the valence um, as signed by humans and as is computed in this uh, word embedding space. And what really triggered us was this last graph where um, uh, what Jacobs did was uh, cut the pieces of the Sandman story, a famous story in German uh, literary history, in pieces of about 100 words and then had those uh, segments rated by um, humans for their uh, attractivity. And then he computed the um, uh, uh, using the effective, uh, uh, effective aesthetic potential, um, the uh, values of those sections, and you see that there's a, a very big correlation and that actually um, the uh, uh, effective aesthetic potential is uh, uh, reasonably well able to predict the liking of the, uh, of the text, of the text fragments. So we thought that's something that we can use for Dutch. We computed a word embedding uh, based on uh, 11,000 of our novels. We translated Jacob's uh, seed words into Dutch and we computed the, um, I'll now say AAP, that's much easier than saying effective aesthetic potential. We computed the AAP and valence for all words in the corpus. And first of all, we compared them with existing valence dictionaries for Dutch. Here you see the uh, valence dictionary of Morse et al. Um, uh, compared with our computed uh, valence, and you see there's a 70% a, a correlation. It's, well, reasonably well. Uh, another existing valence dictionary for Dutch, which only has a bina binary classification into positive and negative words. Here you see violin plots for the uh, Senti art values, and you also see that there's a clear difference, um, though not a super clear difference, uh, between um, the two, the positive and the negative subcorpora within this uh, Lila dictionary. Um, other way, um, we also computed the um, AAP um, on two different word embeddings. We used the Wikipedia embedding, which is standard available, and um, the embedding based on our novels. And what you see are two things. First of all, that the um, values are highly correlated. So um, uh, uh, there's not that much difference between the um, Wikipedia embedding and a novel embedding. But what you also see is that uh, in the Wikipedia embedding, which is on the y-axis, um, the values are much closer to each other uh, than in um, our own uh, novel-based embedding. And we interpret that to mean, um, uh, uh, recall that this um, uh, uh, score is computed by uh, subtracting the similarity to the positive values from the similarity to the negative values. If um, the difference is bigger, that means um, probably that the, um, uh, the seed words occupy a larger part of the um, total semantic space in the embedding and are probably therefore more sensitive than um, when they come from this smaller Embedding. So we think that this shows that the novel embedding is really the appropriate embedding to use if we want to um, research um, valence or uh, aesthetic effective valences on our um, uh, book corpus. Then um, um, just um, uh, the values within a single novel of this um, AAP and valence um, this is the, the girl on the train, which you may know. Um, we see in orange the value as computed uh, according to the procedure by Jacobs. And um, the uh, AAP, what you see is that it is uh, close. The correlation is 85. But again, there are also clear differences um, uh, where the two locations where the uh, two curves uh, clearly uh, run uh, uh, differently. So. Um, the AAP clearly also um, uh, uh, finds a signal that the valence alone uh, wouldn't find. Um, then we took what you may think of as a long shot, and which certainly some of our reviewers thought of, a long shot, thought of as a long shot. Uh, our reasoning was that um, if um, this AAP is able to predict um, the appreciation of sections of a book, then why shouldn't it be able to predict the appreciation of the whole book? 
After all, if a book consists of, on average, uh, more appreciated sections, you would hope that that translates in the way a book as a whole is appreciated. So what we did was to compute the um, AAP for uh, whole books and then um, correlate this with the ratings that the book was given on, um, thanks, on uh, the sites where we had downloaded our uh, reviews from. And unfortunately, that didn't work. work. The correlation here was um, about zero, and that's what you see in the picture. Um, we thought, well, let's vary this slightly and look at the um, stylistic impact. After all, it's meant to, uh, to, to uh, refer to uh, aesthetics. So you would say if there's stylistic impact shown in the reviews, um, that might be predicted by the um, effective aesthetic potential, but unfortunately that too didn't work. So um, um, at the moment that leaves us uh, at a position where we are thinking how are we going to continue this. Um, there's a number of things that we um, want to think about. Um, one of the um, uh, smaller issues is uh, what part of the valence spectrum do we have to take into account. Um, the um, idea is that there are uh, uh, most words don't really contribute to valence. They, they get uh, computed valence within this uh, large word embedding, but it's so small as to probably be really negligible. negligible. Um, so the idea is, and that's also what Jacobs did, um, that you could, for instance, only say we're going to use the words where the uh, valence is more than uh, the median value or something like that. So that's something which we have to experiment with. There's another aspect which we think um, might be doubtful. Um, that is, um, though it's in some respects quite common, um, uh, this uh, valence measure uh, joins the positive and negative emotion uh, in the way that um, if a positive emotion is present and a negative emotion, the result might be zero. Of course, in reality, um, that's not the way um, emotions work. So maybe we need to take somehow into account um, both um, the, uh, the um, uh, rather than uh, subtract them to get the, um, uh, let's say, the, the end level, you could also argue you have, you have to um, add the values to get um, at um, the total um, amount of emotion that people can feel in a story. Um, so that brings us, in a way, um, to the, in the direction of taking also into account arousal. So that's the activity level of the emotion. Um, then there are some issues related to the seed words that uh, Jacobs uses. Of course, for instance, um, hope and paradise are in the positive seed words. And hope and paradise are clearly good things. But you can't make a story out of hope and paradise alone. Um, on the other hand, words like despair and horror and cheating are in the negative word list. Um, and, well, that's what narrative are ma is made of often. So um, um, we also think that there's lots to think about um, uh, when looking at this uh, specific choice of seed words. And uh, that may not mean uh, that we have to do away with the um, uh, AAP, but um, it might mean um, that we certainly need other aspects in order to account for that which makes stories interesting. Then finally, there's the question of um, how are we going to summarize the information at book level. Uh, what we did in our first attempt was just uh, average all values over the entire book. Well, that's maybe a, 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 a naive approach, and it evidently didn't work. Then um, the next approach might be to just look at the ending, uh, because that is what um, uh, people probably will respond to. A, a positive ending and a negative ending is obviously uh, important for a book. We could look at trends. So is there a positive or a negative um, uh, effect? We could look at arcs. Uh, of course, there's been quite a lot of work on um, um, the emotional arcs that novels may, um, uh, may have. And um, uh, they might, that might also have an effect on uh, readers. 
Uh, there has even been some uh, research into so-called fractal patterns, so um, repeating patterns at um, very small, at medium, and at higher levels. And some people have uh, said that they are finding um, certain trends in that. And then um, what we could also do, and that's um, the, the uh, thing that we are most at currently most thinking about, is looking at volatility. So not so much um, uh, the uh, amounts of positive or negative uh, uh, emotion or valence or AAP, but rather the way it switches. And um, uh, that's, uh, there has been some research which has shown that in a number of types of texts, that's certainly uh, important for the uh, effect on readers. And we are uh, expecting that this will also, uh, may also occur uh, in uh, novels, but that remains to be seen. Thank you for your interest.